I'm Dr. Madhubir Singh, your emergency medicine specialist. The nurses are striking, the ambulance staff are striking, and soon the doctors are going to be striking. What is going on? Why is it happening? And what is the truth behind the strikes? Well, I'm going to tell you straight, it's not about the nurses wanting to earn more money, and it's not simply about the cost of living crisis, because everybody in the United Kingdom, and to be honest, around the rest of the world, is going to be experiencing the same problems. So we're not in a special category because of that. Now, it's important to know why this is happening, because there's disruptions happening to the NHS services. There's disruptions to getting to emergency calls by the ambulance, there's severe disruptions to the NHS outpatient appointments, care being given in different aspects of health and social care, and ultimately patients are suffering and actually will continue to be suffering because of these actions. You've got to remember that this is the first time the nurses have had industrial action. So this is something very serious because it's something that affects you and I. One day I might be a patient. I might be someone that needs the help of the NHS. So let's have a quick look back exactly why the nurses want to have a pay rise. Just a quick one everyone, remember to like, share and subscribe before we get into the video. Let's go. They need to beat years of inflation and stagnation. They're already at a deficit of about £1,600. There's about 704,000 nurses on the nursing register. 21,219 of them have already left. They've also had 43,417 join. That's an 18,190 increase. About 22,500 came from outside of the EU and only 663 from within. That has left a workforce vacancy for nurses of about 40,000. That's 10 percent of the NHS workforce. And to fill that 10 percent, that cost the NHS 6 point two billion pounds. So not only having a deficit is costing the NHS and the government and us as taxpayers a lot of money, it's also meaning that per patient head we have less nurses. So our nursing ratio in the UK is about 0 0.7 nurses to 100 people. That's the same as Lithuania which is ranked as 36 for its GDP. Now that is absolutely shocking. As the sixth largest country by GDP to be ranking the same as Lithuania is embarrassing. Just look at some of these other EU countries that have got almost two, two and a half times more better ratio than us. You have Switzerland, Norway, all the way at the top with 7.9 nurses per 100. And then you've still got countries like Finland, Germany, Ireland, Luxembourg, Belgium, Sweden, the Netherlands, Austria, Slovenia, Denmark, and we haven't even included other countries like the United States, Canada, New Zealand, Australia. I'm hoping some of this is starting to make sense and show you the real picture of what's occurring. We're not looking very good. So what does this exactly mean by having a reduced number of nurses? It means that the nurses have to do double, triple the amount of work that they have to do. You might be sitting there at home thinking, well, you in your sector or your profession, in your job, you already have to do double the amount of work. So what difference is it if the nurses have to do it? And what difference is it if the ambulance crew have to do it or if the doctors have to do it? They can do double the work just like us. Well, no, I'll tell you why. It's about responsibility and the danger of outcome is very high. Why you might ask? because they have to deal with a human life. In no other job will you have that severity. Having to see, assess, treat, manage, and care for patients, it's not an easy thing to do. You're not only having to deal with one patient with different complications, giving treatment, giving medicines, giving care, but then there are several other patients. Sometimes it can be eight, nine, or 10 patients at any one time, and you're having to give care at multiple levels to different patients at the same time. How can you expect one person to do that? Looking from a doctor's point of view, when I have to jump between different patients and I have to treat someone for sepsis, treat somebody else for a trauma, jump to a pediatric patient for an arrest situation where we're having to give cardiac massage and then jumping again somewhere else to give another emergency treatment such as a chest drain, it's impossible to do, but we still make it happen. But this leads to other patients who are not as critically unwell having to wait, which means they get more unwell, which leads to worse outcomes. That's the things that are gonna affect you as patients yourself, or as family members of patients. Even a simple thing, for example, you're coming in with pain, but there are four, five, six emergencies going on in the A&E. How do you expect a single individual to do more than they're asked to do? That means those patients, for example, that would need a simple prescription for a painkiller to make their pain go away has to wait. And this is where the problems come in. It leads to bad patient experience. Also then imagine if a patient has unfortunately passed away in the emergency department, which happens very regularly. We are the ones who have to go 
we're in comfort then. We have to explain to them the situation and we have to do that in a very caring and compassionate mannerism, yet while still dealing with the emergencies. So it's not like any other job that you could possibly imagine. What we don't want as nurses and doctors is for patients to come to harm. We are there to protect them. We are there to make them better. We are there to comfort them and give them dignity in situations that they don't want to be in. For whatever reason, their body's decided to come unwell. We are there to make them better. So working in that kind of environment leads to increased stress. This leads to changes in interest that one would have in their job. When there is a compromise to patient safety, when there are those dangers involved, we as healthcare professionals do not want to take that risk, as no one would want to. I'm sure you wouldn't want to. And as a result of that, that leads to a heavy burden being taken into our hearts when we leave a shift, when we go home, thinking, have we done the best for our patients? Have we done the best that we could possibly do? And the answer is, when you are working in a tough environment like that, that a lot of people are feeling that this is not the case, that the best has not been provided. Yes, the environment and patients have been kept safe, but the best care has not been provided. A lot of people have been talking about there has been dangerous environments. A lot of people have been mentioning that it is an unsafe environment to work in. So you can imagine from their viewpoints, the job then no longer becomes of an interest to them. It becomes a dangerous place to work in, a job that nobody then wants to go towards. This then leads to increased sick days because of the stress and the anxiety that are caused by the job. This then leads to reduced staffing levels even further. That then leads on to even further complications and difficulties in the hospitals for the patients. And it ends up being a very negative cycle. And when you've got the fear of litigation, so patients and family members litigating against you, there's not going to be many people who want to come into a job with that amount of fear on their back because of complications and side effects that will occur due to these issues. Nobody wants to deal with a complaint that has arisen because of a dangerous environment or a bad situation that occurred because there wasn't enough staff members. I'm sure if you look at your own profession, if that was the case and that was occurring, I don't think you'd be very happy. And I think you would be going into work every day quite stressed and anxious about the situation and what might happen next. Also the big issue to do with whistleblowing. This is to do with issues that arise when people try to raise concerns and complaints. And you may have already read that in the news and you may have already heard of this. There are organizations out there who do not like staff members raising complaints or issues. Now I've been very lucky and I've never had to be involved or ever be a witness to any of those types of situations, but I have read about it on the news. And it's quite sad to see that those cases are still occurring. And again, that leads to a negative situation where staff members feel that they can't raise complaints because of fear of backlash. And what that leads to is then further stress, further anxiety and reduced staffing levels. On top of that, when you've had the reduced pay in line with inflation, this leads to healthcare professionals looking elsewhere around the world to see where else can they go. So we have a large amount of doctors and nurses who leave the United Kingdom to go off to other countries, such as Canada, such as the United States, Australia, New Zealand. They offer so much more benefits in terms of salary, work-life balance, and reduced stresses at work. Nursing pay. Nurses are paid based on banding. For a newly qualified nurse, that starts at a band five. That is £27,000 a year. They're eligible for pay progression after two years, which then increases to £29,000. After further two more years, that will then increase to just under £33,000. Most nurses will be at this band five level for the majority of their career. Those then that are fortunate enough or want that level of progression to a band six, which is a more senior nurse, will then start at just above £33,000. And again, that will have incremental stages as you can see from the table. After five years at this level, their pay will be set about £40,000. And then you've got the further higher bands, which are for even more senior nurses known as band sevens. And then that increases to band eights, which have subdivisions and then goes on to a band nine. These further higher levels known as bands eights and nines are what we call senior management or directorate level. There are only very few positions at these levels. Only a very few amount of nurses go on to those levels. The majority of the nurses are at the band five level. At minimum, they are earning £27,000 and the majority at the maximum are on £40,500. You might think that's a lot, but actually for the amount of work, the intensity, the stress, the pressures, 
the dangers, which is one of the most important things, the dangers that are involved of looking after a patient and what could go wrong. And these are things that could go wrong for your loved ones, my loved ones. That is what they are getting paid. Now I look at it and I think of if someone is going to look after me or my loved one and they're highly skilled and they're highly trained, is that a respectable salary for that person to be on? I'm not looking at this with a biased point of view as a doctor. You may think I'm being biased, but I'm not. I'm being genuinely serious and looking at it from a sensible, financial sustainment point of view if you want to have the best people working for you is that a sensible salary for someone that has to deal with all the different factors that we've just spoken about the genuine answer is no and if you think that is a respectable amount of money to be paid for i would just genuinely ask you come to the emergency department do a bit of volunteer work or even apply for a role and you will very quickly get to see exactly what the job entails, how difficult it is, and actually most people find they can't do it. The nurses have been taking these strike days very seriously and they're going to be taking that even more seriously moving forwards. We've also had the ambulance crew striking as well and that's also a very serious issue. Doctors are also going to be striking quite soon and the reason behind this is multi-layered again. For that, I've made a separate video, so please watch that one when that comes out. The best outcome would be that all staff members are given their pay rises. It looks like the government are very serious about not giving the pay rises, and they're not very serious about discussions or talks. You've got to remember that this is the first time the nurses have had industrial action. So this is something very serious because it's something that affects you and I. One day, I might be a patient. I might be someone that needs the help of the NHS. I might be someone who needs the help of the nurse, of the ambulance crew, of a doctor. And if we're not there to protect it, if we're not there to protect you, who will be there in the future when that time arises? The NHS is absolutely brilliant. Yes, it's got faults. We all understand that, we know that, but it's brilliant in a lot of aspects. It's a lot better than most other countries and it protects those people who need it the most. If there are any issues that didn't make sense or you want me to cover, please leave a comment down below. Remember to like, share and subscribe. My name is Dr. Midanveed Singh. I'm an emergency medicine specialist and I'm here to try to explain different topics the best way that I can, making it fun, making it informative. So remember, I'll see you all in my next video.